Thank you very much for taking time out in what's obviously a very busy campaign to join us here in Calgary and, and speak in the Western Standard Studios. So uh, welcome and... Uh, uh, thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be here. And as you know, it's an important campaign and we have a lot of support here in Alberta. So I'm here today and I will be back in Alberta also at the end of the campaign. Great. And it has been evident. I, I'm out and about a lot. I'm, I'm certainly seeing a presence from the PPC on the ground. I'm seeing campaigners. I'm seeing campaign signs. Uh, it's more evident than, than in 2019 uh, by a great deal. Uh, you're coming close to having a full slate of candidates. I saw you announced some in, in Prince Edward Island now. Uh, yeah. How many candidates is the PPC running right now? Yeah, we have 331 candidates and uh, almost a full slate. Uh, our goal is to have 338, uh, but you know we have more candidates than the Green Party of Canada, more candidates than the NDP. So we are a real national political party with uh, candidates all across the country. Okay, so without doubt, I mean, there's, there's no avoiding it. COVID-19, government response, uh, party responses, I mean, it's, it's the dominant issue in this election, it's what everybody's talking about. It's one of the things I, th I believe that the, the PPC is distinguishing itself that you're not speaking of uh, vaccine passports or mandatory vaccinations or things such as that. Can you expand on, on where the, the party stands on that? Yeah, you're right. This election, I believe, will be a referendum on the way that the government managed that crisis, the COVID-19 crisis. And I say, you know, it's COVID hysteria. Uh, you know, it's not new for us, uh, our platform, and we believe in individual freedom, personal responsibility, respect and fairness. And I was uh, out there uh, 18 months ago. Uh, speaking against these uh, lockdowns all across the country, uh, against a mask mandate, and now it's uh, a vaccine passport. So people know that we are doing politics based on conviction, on principles, and we are losing our way of life right now. Uh, and the question would be, do you want more and more of the same, or you want to go back to your life before COVID-19? That would be the important question for Canadians uh, before going to, uh, to vote. So a lot of the measures, of course, that have been brought in weren't federal measures, they were provincial ones. I mean, perhaps with the support of the federal government. Uh, Section 1 of the Charter has been where they've been using as, as a reason to impede on individual rights so far. Uh, but what would you do? I mean, you, your, your party also st talks about devolving power to the provinces. I mean, yeah. if uh, a provincial government in, in Alberta, for example, Jason Kenney had arrested preachers. He had, uh, you know, he's arrested hockey players, young kids on the no. streets. But do you intervene in a provincial matter or? No, you... no, we won't. But what we will respect the constitution. Uh, but what we, were, what we will do, it's uh, very simple. These uh, provincial governments were able to do lockdowns because they had the, the financial support from the federal government. Uh, with all these programs to individuals and also to businesses, uh, we will cut all that. So a province, if they want to do another lockdown this fall, they will have to uh, put money coming from their taxpayers. So that was a strong incentive that Trudeau gave to provinces to do these lockdowns. So the Trudeau, uh, the Trudeau government and the federal government has an important role to play there. And so that's why we are against lockdown. We won't give any money to provinces to do that. And actually, Justin Trudeau just said that he will give a billion dollars to impose lockdowns and give that to provinces that will uh, put in force more lockdowns and a vaccine passport. So, so that's an important role from the federal government. We won't do that. We won't spend that money. We are for freedom of choice. We're not anti-vaccine or anti-mask. We are for freedom of choice. Everybody must be able to decide if they want the vaccine or not. Now there's a discrimination, segregation, uh, in Canada, and we want everybody to be united under the banner of freedom. That's our country, freedom of choice. So that's why we have more and more support. People can see where this country is going, and they don't like that. And, uh, and I believe that they are right. Uh, that's not our country anymore. When you have a government that imposes a mask on children, that must be the decision coming from the parents. And the parents must be able to decide if their kids will wear a mask at school or not. That's not, a, that's not the government. We, it's an author, authoritarian government that we have here in Canada, uh, provincial and at the federal level. Mm -hmm. And then, so getting back to the province, Alberta is something of a, a unique battleground that's coming around. And we, we're having a number of alternative parties and movements are coming up. Your, your former compatriot, Jay Hill, is running the, the Maverick Party. Uh, and Derek Sloan has, has, has come out. Uh, I know you're, you're visiting uh, Banff uh, Airdrie uh, tonight. And, 
We have a candidate, Nadine Wellwood, there. And uh, Derek Sloan actually called for uh, your candidate to step aside in this election, said he's the only one who could win there. Uh, That's a little bit arrogant. Uh, you know, I, I, I know Derek. I asked him to come with us, and he decided Derek is a big boy. He said that he, don't, he doesn't want to be a candidate under the PPC. And, and, and Nadine, she's one of the best candidates in, here in Alberta. And yes, I'm going there to help her. And I believe that uh, she has a big chance to win there. So, so Derek decided to, but he told me that he will create a new party. And that was a lie. There's no new party now. So he has to run as an independent. And I don't, I'm, I'm questioning his commitment to Alberta when uh, his wife, She's running in Ontario, so you're gonna live in Ontario and in Alberta, and so it's not serious. People know that you know. If you want to have changes, that the People's Party of Canada is there for Albertans and for all Canadians. We are against the Paris Accord uh, for pipelines. We will use the Constitution to impose impose a pipeline on provinces that don't want it. We will uh, also change the equalization formula that is unfair. And the only leader of national party that is speaking about that in Eastern Canada. I was in New Brunswick, and you know that New Brunswick, they received 50% of their provincial budget is coming from the equalization money. And I told them in their face that we need to change the equalization formula. We need to be fair to every province. And yes, uh, New Brunswick will receive less money from the equalization, but that would be a good news for you in New Brunswick and in Quebec also, because you have the right incentive to develop your own natural resources and you'll be a rich province. So it's important to speak about that in Eastern Canada, but the other establishment political parties are not doing that. And it's important for the prosperity of our country, but it's important also for the unity of our country. And I know why, why Albertans are mad and, and frustrated, and they have a reason for that. So we have a solution for Alberta that it would be good for all Canadians. And you know, the Maverick Party, it's not serious. When you have a leader of a party that is an interim leader and don't, doesn't have the courage to run in a federal election, what's that? It's not serious. <laughs> and that party is like the Conservative Party of Canada. They're the, the muppet of the Conservative Party of Canada. They're the same on the most important issues. Actually, they're for the vaccine mandate. They're for a vaccine passport. They're against our freedom. So I believe that Albertans are intelligent and they will look at our candidates all across the province, real people that are ready to fight for them, and they will have a voice in Ottawa. You will have a strong freedom, common sense voice in Ottawa that will come from here, Alberta. Okay, so something a little different. And speaking of provincial autonomy, you know, it's a strong issue in Alberta right now. I mean, yeah. we're, we're chronically upset, and uh, more yeah. so uh, typically when liberals are in than not. And you um, have a right. You have a right to be upset. And we, we have a couple of referendums coming tied in with our municipal elections in September. One's on the equalization, which yeah. you already uh, spoke of. Yeah. We're also holding Senate elections, which has yeah. been something of a, yeah. a tradition out here. But something they did this time is they've only allowed federal candidates to run in the Senate election. It used to be provincial, so you get a variety of candidates, but now the only ones who kind of uh, respected are, are O'Toole's conservatives, so it looks like we might have just a, a handful of, like, will the PPC consider running Senate candidates in this uh, coming absolutely, election? Absolutely, absolutely. We will have a PPC candidate for the Senate election here in Alberta that will fight for Alberta based on our PPC platform. You know, equalization formula, we need to change that to be less generous. That's most important. And, and pipelines and, and all these important issues. I'm asking people, go on our website, People's Party of Canada at Sea, and read it. Read it. You're going to see that it's a great platform. And yes, I'm very happy. We'll have somebody. And just stay tuned. I will be able to do another interview with you and uh, with that uh, person that will represent us for the Senate election. Good. I, I am happy to hear it because I do want to see Senate reform. And I, I like the concept of having Senate elections, but having a ridiculous one where only people from one party are running in it is, is just a waste of time. So I, I'd like to see it contested. So I, I appreciate uh, that that answer. So something you've probably heard a lot and you're going to hear more of, particularly in Alberta. We, we suffered direly in... Uh, getting out there and having multiple candidates go against an established government and, and ended up with uh, Rachel Notley here for a term. And, and people are very concerned about vote splitting and perhaps, uh, you know, ending up with a candidate uh, with minority support but still ends up winning the election. Uh, how can you address people with that but, concern? But there's no vote splitting when mm -hmm. all the other options are the same. 
You know, if you're a real conservative, vote for your values. Don't vote against something. We need a conservative voice in Ottawa. We don't have that. You know, the conservative, they're, they're like the liberals. I can go on with the subject I, I told you, the vaccine passport, they will impose that. Uh, they won't speak about the equalization formula. You had a, a lot of, uh, 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 almost all your member of parliament coming from Alberta are conservative. We don't know. What, what did they do for you? Nothing, nothing. So we are there to fight, and I believe that people must vote this time, and they will vote for their values. They will vote for a real conservative voice in Ottawa, and we don't split any vote. The person that is splitting the vote, it's Aaron O'Toole. His goal is to split the Liberals' vote, and he's very successful at doing that. He's speaking like a leftist, a liberal, and, and when he's doing that, he's giving more credibility to the leftist narrative so we need to speak openly with passion and conviction about our values if we want to win. And you can count on all our candidates here that will do that. So there's no splitting the vote because they're all the same on all these issues. And, and I believe that more and more people understand that now. Okay, and, and on an issue that uh, Aaron O'Toole did turn out to be just the same as the Liberals was, the carbon tax. Uh, he's calling it something else, but he did a complete about-face. We were very upset with that uh, when that happened. Where does the PPC stand on emissions taxes, carbon taxes, uh, things like that? First of all, we won't sign the Paris Accord. We won't impose a carbon tax. We won't impose more regulation on businesses. So we're saying no to that. I'm saying the same thing here in Alberta and in Eastern Canada. We, we have one platform that is good for the country. And, and uh, I'm very, yes, Aaron O'Toole said to uh, the Conservatives, uh, the members of the Conservative Party of Canada, that he was against a carbon tax. And now he's like Trudeau on that issue and a lot of other issues. So that's why they cannot trust him. Why wasting your vote with the Conservative? I think a vote is very important. Don't waste your vote. Vote for the real Conservative. And um, that's why, you know, we're doing very well in Alberta. We're growing in the poll. And we'll see. A lot of people will have a big surprise the 20th of September. Okay. And another event that we didn't anticipate really coming into this election, but foreign affairs, the Afghanistan debacle, I mean, there's people left behind. Uh, where, where does the PPC stand like in, in the role we see as Canada on the world stage as, as far as uh, militaristic? Uh... Yeah, but first of all, Justin Trudeau said that he wants to have 28,000 Afghans coming here. But the most important is to have Canadians that are there and Afghans that help us. Uh, you know, they're still there over there, but we don't need to bring 20,000 people. We need to bring maybe 5,000, 2,000, I don't know, but the Afghans that help us during that crisis. Uh, and other countries must do their work also. We cannot save the planet. And, you know, we, we have a huge deficit here. We have mass immigration. You know, we'll have 400,000 people that will come here. And the big majority of them, 76% of them, are refugees and people coming under reunification of family. We need to change that ratio, having fewer immigrants, 150,000 a year. And that will, must be in line with our economic needs in our country. And the majority of them, 76%, must be skilled immigrants. So a person that will come here with a job because a Canadian entrepreneur was not able to find a Canadian for that job. So yes, and, and that person, it would be easier for that person to be part of our society, uh, to, uh, to integrate our society. Uh, and that's why we need to have people that will share our values. So concerning that file, I, I'm open to have Afghan that help us during that crisis but not 20,000. We cannot save everybody. Yeah, so I mean, it's, your party, I, I know it gets branded as anti-immigration. I, I, I'm maybe reading in in a sense. So you just want no, controlled not. immigration. Or, 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 or for sustainable immigration. Mm -hmm. We are against mass immigration for sustainable immigration. And, and, and because we like this country. We want this country to be like that in 25 years. We like it. I, you know, I look what is happening in France. And, and there's no go zone there. There's ghettos over there. We don't want that. Yes, this country is diverse uh, and diversity is good, but always more and more diversity. Uh, it's not good. We need to celebrate what unites us. We need to celebrate our culture. We need to celebrate our heritage. And it is sad that I was the only leader in Ottawa the 1st of July celebrating our country. Justin Trudeau said, you know, Canada is the first post-national state with no core identity. No. No, I'm proud. Yes, we have different culture. The culture from Quebec is different than the culture here in Alberta. 
but that's our country. There's no country like that. So, so we must be proud of that, and uh, and we will we will fight for our values, and that's the People's Party of Canada. So that's why we have a lot of people that are looking at us, saying, you know, these people are doing politics differently. Yes, we're doing politics based on principle and ideas, and we have a vision for this country. And our vision is we know that you know better what is good for you, and we have faith in you. We have faith that, we have faith that you have the ability, the dignity, and the right to make your own decisions for your own life. Great. Well, aside from the specific issues, is, is there more you'd like to add on, you know, why the People's Party of Canada is providing an alternative, why people should uh, put their vote your way then? Because I don't want Canadians to waste their vote. Uh, if you're tired of the situation right now and you want to go back to your life, you know, the discrimination is huge uh, and there's racial politics in this country. When you have a government that has created a, a program only for black entrepreneurs, that's racist. We will abolish that and if we want to do a program for entrepreneurs, it will be for all entrepreneurs. And that identity politics and, and political correctness, it is killing our country. So we need to be there for Canadians and our, our party is putting Canada first and Canadian first. And I'm asking people, go on our website and please read our platform. If you like it, support us. If you don't like it and you want the same that you had the last uh, five years, uh, vote for another party. Don't vote for us. But I believe that people won't waste their vote with the Conservatives or the Liberals. And there's no splitting the vote here in, 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 in Alberta. Uh, if you're a real Conservative, the only option is the People's Party of Canada. Great, and we'll get your website one more time so people know where they're going. Yeah, People's Party of Canada .ca. And like that, they can go on our candidates, they can click on Alberta, and they will have all the candidates, and they can be in touch with their candidate in their writing. Great, and you'll be touring, and there'll be more events coming in the uh, coming Yeah, we here. have an event tonight, and they can go on the website. They will have more details about that. Uh, I'm here for the next uh, two days, and I'll be back before the end of the campaign for six days. Uh, it's important for me because I want Alberta to understand that we are the only real option for them. Okay, well, thank you very much for coming in to speak to us today. It's good to get, you know, an expansion on what's going on, what you guys are offering, and you really do stand out from the others. I mean, that the others are kind of all moving together into the same area of authoritarianism uh, and, and, and milk and toast policies. So, you know, like or not like, the PPC's offerings is some clear-cut distinguishment. Uh, and so. I want to thank you also for giving me that opportunity because, as you know, we have been cancelled by the mainstream media, and we are, uh, I'm, I'm very pleased to be able to speak with an independent media, and we want the media to be independent like you. So uh, it's a great opportunity for us, because I believe that people must hear what we have to say. The mainstream media don't want that, because I believe our message is too powerful, but I appreciate that you gave us this opportunity. Well, great, thank you, and uh, I'm certain we'll be talking again perhaps by the end of the campaign, or if not, uh, as you said, with the Senate campaign when that comes a little later. Thank you very much. Great, thanks. Thanks.